My name is Richard Gladwell. I've been a professional numismatist now for 45 years. Um, I'm speaking to you here from Baldwin's in the Strand. I'm going to talk to you about some coins that we have in our Black Museum. I.e. these are not for sale, these are forgeries, but they are quite interesting forgeries. Now, I'm holding in my hand a Roman coin. It's about one and a half inches across. On one side, it's got the portrait of Nero, and on the other side, it has a diagrammatic picture of the port of Ostia, which Nero had just uh, spent a lot of money modernizing. It was struck in 64 AD, uh, except that's not what it is. This coin was actually struck in the 16th century, probably about 1540 or 1550, by an engraver in Padua. Now, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you about Giovanni da Cavino, who was a master engraver in Padua and who basically copied these coins. Giovanni was the son of a jeweller. He was born into a jeweller's family. He was born in the high Renaissance time in, in about 1499, 1500, we're not quite sure when. He was born at a time when suddenly the whole world, the whole known world, especially Italy, was starting to collect. And in the 1530s, 1540s, when he was 30, 40, he started to engrave dies of Roman coins. Um, we don't quite know why he decided to do that. He was very friendly with someone called Alessandro Bessiano who was a numismatist, uh, uh, also a big collector, and it's, we think that these two got together and um, Giovanni decided to, to start engraving dies for coins. Now, he did something like 120 different coins. At the time, they weren't considered forgeries, although he did copy almost exactly existing Roman coins. They were revered at the time. In those days, there wasn't quite so much emphasis on you know, whether the coin was real or not. It was more the style and more the collectability of it. So he issued something like 120 different types. They weren't just all Roman coins. Sometimes he mixed it up with contemporary figures, politicians, um, priests, uh, artists at the time, mixed them up with Roman reverses, uh, and basically he was, he was regarded as a master engraver, and these coins were revered and collected, and at the time they, any collection of ancient coins had several examples of his work. This particular coin is a forgery, or perhaps I should really say an imitation of a Roman coin, but because it was so revered, it was collected, and uh, therefore it has quite a great value. Now, go forward another 100 years, and suddenly Northern Europe discovered Italy. Um, the English lords would go to Italy on the grand tour and uh, visit all the sites, and the Italians would want to sell a few Roman coins. Now, the problem was they didn't have that many. But what they did have were these original 16th century uh, copies of Roman coins, which they then copied. The original coins were struck, then they were copied by casting. From about 1630 onwards, you know, during the Grand Tour, these, these coins were copied and copied and copied. Each time they were copied, they lost a bit of detail. So now we have literally hundreds of copies of these types. So, Downstairs in our Black Museum, we have got boxes and boxes of these copies of what were originally uh, imitations of Roman coins struck by Cavinos. Because he was from Padua, they are generally called Paduans. Now, these are essentially forges. These were, these were sold at sites, temples, Roman remains and stuff, as original coins. And so the English lord would, would come up and say, oh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll buy this for a few lira. And they came back to northern Europe. So technically, they are forgeries. But because they are quite obviously forgeries, because Cavino's style was not quite the same as Roman, he was a Renaissance engraver. So they're, they're, they're slightly, 
the, the, the portraits are more fluid and uh, they're a little bit more neater than the actual Roman copies. Um, so suddenly the whole of Europe started bringing these back home as original Roman coins. So initially they were regarded as forgers, but now they're highly collected because they're, they're, they're quite easy to tell that they are not the original Roman coins. Um, and so they've become a collecting heir in their own right. They are a bit dangerous because to the average person, they wouldn't really know if this is an original Roman coin or this was a pageant, a copy of one of Cavino's original engraved dies. But they have become quite a popular collecting area now and they often sell for two or three hundred pounds if they're in good condition. But we've always kept these as forgeries because, I don't know, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult situation. Are these forgeries or are these a collecting genre? They're certainly sold in the open market and they are collected. Uh, but we keep them in our Black Museum. We've got literally boxes and boxes of them. Every time Baldwin's bought a collection in the last 150 years it's been going, there'd be probably one or two Paduans in there. The collector probably knew they were, they were copies, but, but had them because they were quite interesting. Over the years, these have mounted up. Some of them are very crude because by the time they'd been copied for the 25th time, as I say, each time they're recast, they lose definition. So some of them are very crude and very obvious forges. But the earlier you go back, the early copies, they haven't lost detail, so they're actually quite sharp and, and quite pretty. But I'd say, here they are. Boxes and boxes and boxes of them. But for the moment, they're staying in our Black Museum.